I think that's good. I think, you know, I think, I think we're good here. I tried hanging up, like, more posters and stuff, but, like, they just keep falling out. Just... Reading the Fast X Wikipedia page is such a treat because it gives you an idea of just how toxic this franchise is. Originally, this was going to be directed by Justin Lin, who had previously handled five other Fast films. He had arguments with Vin Diesel over creative differences. Dom probably wasn't getting enough screen time. And he even apparently yelled, this film is not worth my mental health before leaving the project entirely. Because he left during principal filming, some scenes were shot without a director at all. As a matter of fact, the fight scene between Letty and Cypher was shot before they even got a new director. On top of creative differences, Diesel would also demand last second changes during writing and filming stages, which I presume included trying to get The Rock back, something that he made very clear during Fast X's early stages. My hot take is that The Rock is not an actor, he is a businessman, hence why when he did announce he was coming back, there was also the reveal of a Hobbs solo film, because fuck British people apparently. It doesn't matter how long you've been involved in a franchise, it doesn't matter whether a director is even involved or not. None of these people really care. The only thing that matters is that it's happening eventually. I know it sounds obvious to say the Fast and Furious series only exists to make money. It's like saying Star Wars only exists to make money, but Star Wars is actually cool. This franchise could have realistically ended by its first film, and they know this. The ironic factor of Fast and Furious is the only reason that keeps this series alive. I am getting ahead of myself though. All of this immense pressure, a film under development hell trying to scrap itself together with no director was put under one Louis Leterrier lot of director of Grimsby. This man was brought into the movie during development hell and was told to rewrite the third act, which is kind of like a way of telling someone to just rewrite the entire script, which he did multiple times. So the question is now, was his effort worth it? Yes. Yes, it was. I feel divided over what I should take from this film. I think Louis Leterrier has done something interesting to Fast X. He has created a film that is so consistently engaging yet so unremarkable at the same time. A movie that makes you question why you saw what you just saw. I'm not usually like this for the Fast films. I won't kid myself, I like these movies. Some of them I consider cinematic masterpieces. I said forget about it, cuz. These movies are appealing because of the spectacle, whether it be with action or characters. There's always this constant to top itself after every entry, and it feels like Fast X doesn't really care at all. Let's do a rundown. Previously, we saw these two stopping World War III by using a submarine on ice and the revelation of Dom's long lost brother by going into space to ram into an orbital satellite in order to stop him from hacking into every single piece of technology in the entire world by using the DNA of this one character of two minutes of screen time who is now Hans Serena's daughter. In this new one, they play Rocket League in Rome, which it, it doesn't sound very fun, but it is, trust me. After they play Rocket League in Rome, there's like these news reports and one of them says that there were no casualties, which I call bullshit on because no one died from that, really. I'm not saying the streets need to be covered in red, but when your action film is so distinctly lacking in actual weight to these catastrophic events, is it really worth it? I understand they want to maintain the PG-13 rating, but when Fast Five was also PG-13 and it had this, I don't think there's an excuse. Don't get me wrong, there are deaths in this film, but just like the Rome scene, there are never any casualties in Fast and Furious. Jacob, Han, whoever Ludacris plays, Roman and Ramsey all seemingly die, but you know they'll be back because they always have to come back. They showcase these deaths so proudly and it's as if they know we're calling their bluff because we, the audience, understand Fast and Furious. I'm beating around the bush, but Fast X feels like it actively mocks Fast and Furious, and not in like a self-aware, goofy way. It feels self-aware in a spiteful way, as if it knows the series has written itself into a corner and the heat has died out. And I don't mean just critically either. F9 made $700 million in the box office, nothing to scoff at, but Furious 7 and Fate of the Furious both made over a billion dollars. And now this one is exiting theaters with only $600 million in the box office. For the record, that's less than the spinoff film, which also made $700 million. So shit, maybe The Rock made the right call. Considering Fast X had a larger budget than F9, it's becoming clear the profits are becoming smaller and smaller. The series is ending with a whimper. I went back and rewatched a lot of moments from this movie without any friends present, and it felt so much more depressing, especially with the added context of how rushed everything was. Scenes feel like they linger for way too long, characters are introduced just to do nothing. I don't know why Brie Larson is in this movie when Scott Eastwood is right there. Like, they are conceptually the same character, and, and I love Brie Larson, but she doesn't do anything in this movie, neither does Scott Eastwood. Hell, no one has much going on besides Dom and, well, 
You butthole! I feel like oh. Fast X is aware of the shortcomings of the franchise, but instead of trying to fix it, it only highlights it. Recent installments have focused much more on Dom Toretto as Vin Diesel's creative lust for power has increased. A franchise that was once brimming with several faces now feels like it revolves around only one. And this movie actively shits on whoever isn't Vin Diesel. Daniela Malquara's character exists just to be kidnapped and saved by Dominic. Mia is sidelined once again despite being part of the series since the fucking beginning. Jacob does nothing but sit in a car and die despite being introduced like one movie ago. Like I mentioned earlier, Roman, Ludacris, Ramsey also die and they actually have quite an expansive subplot in this film. But you want to know what comes of it? Nothing. I even asked my friends I watched the movie with and they were dumbfounded because the fact is none of these characters actually do anything meaningful. Call me out here, but would I sound insane if I said that this was on purpose? Fast X has had the most roster deaths in this series and none of them carry weight because they're not dead. You can't help but laugh seeing Giselle at the end of the film because I believe that is Leterrier looking you in the eyes and reminding you nothing in this franchise matters. The one character who actually stayed dead for more than one film comes back and it's to remind you that no one actually dies in these movies, while at the same time showing you four of the most pivotal deaths in the franchise. She makes a cameo just to remind you that nothing matters. However, no one solidifies the idea that Fast X hates Fast and Furious more than one man who perpetrated all four of those deaths. Here we go! He thought I sounded unhinged for the past like six minutes and you're gonna love what I have to say about Dante. He targets Dominic's obsessive need for family. He mocks everyone, including Dom. He doesn't even seem to care about anyone who isn't Vin Diesel. On the surface, he's the best villain the franchise has ever seen, but subtextually, Dante is us. Hear me out, right? Dante represents how we view the Fast and Furious movies. He sees everything as a joke. Right, he sees Cypher as a joke, a villain many people don't like. He sees killing people as a joke because they don't carry any weight. He sees Dominic as a joke because that's how we view him. He is a character who is retconned into being in Fast Five, a movie many consider to be the peak of the franchise. His entire existence is basically to remind you that this series should have ended by the fifth film. Fast X will spend his time reminding you of better films because it hates what it is. Dante's gimmick is that he doesn't even want to kill Dominic. He just wants him to suffer as much as possible. He wants to prolong his death just as much as his franchise has. Dante is the perfect commentary on the status of Fast and Furious. The best villain in the franchise is someone who doesn't take anything seriously because we relate to that the most. You put a character like Dante in a James Bond movie and it wouldn't work because people take James Bond super seriously. You wanna know how I know that? Because people hated it when they tried fucking doing that. People love Dante, but they hate Fast and Furious. People are calling this one one of the worst in the franchise and there's nothing they could do about it. Everyone involved doesn't care, the series is declining, everyone agrees that it has overstayed its welcome. So what does Louis Interior do? He creates a film that hates its very existence by having the villain's whole gimmick be that he doesn't give a shit about anything and that he is prolonging everything. The irony is this movie could have been perfect and everyone would still hate it because it exists. This franchise is running of 11 films now and they know that the profit margin is shrinking by each film. People are resorting to just laughing at the funny bits on Twitter and ignoring its existence. People found it amusing for a while, the persistence of this franchise. But the one thing people love more than bad media is to see bad media fail, to die trying. Leterrier created the Anti film, a film that satisfies no one but Vin Diesel. And to be honest, I think it was worth it, because this film was hilarious simply for its existence. But despite its brilliance, we will still hate it. We will hate this movie, because we're supposed to. Despite everything they've sacrificed, their mental health, their morale, their integrity, we will despise what they have created because we have grown accustomed to it. And they most likely knew this. They knew it the whole time. But I didn't want to end this video on a sad note, so for the last two minutes I'm going to do every Fast and Furious movie reviewed in 10 words or less. So if you're a fan of Jello Apocalypse, then you already know how this goes. But if you're not, then I think the title speaks for itself. Now I'm going to uncharacteristically include number ratings on the side since the reviews itself aren't super in depth, obviously. The top rating is a genuine rating, which is my rating on how good the film is at what it's trying to do. For example, some of these movies are genuinely trying to be serious and or funny. So this rating is to judge how good they are at that. The bottom rating is purely for ironic enjoyment. This is pretty self-explanatory. The movie has a low ironic score though, it doesn't mean it's not enjoyable, it's just not the type of movie to watch if you want to laugh at it. Also, I may include two reviews for some movies just because I had some outtakes that I thought were funny, but without further ado. 
Why would you call street racing race wars? Tyrese Gibson deserved best supporting actor. I am so serious. No one questions the main antagonist dating a high schooler. All you had to do was name it Fast and Furious. We're gonna do one last job. <laughs> Meanwhile, in writer's room, what if the villain was Dom, but bad? Dom gets shot and he looks more confused than hurt. Great ending, kind of subpar adventure. I can't believe Deckard killed Han. <laughs> Scott Eastwood must have low self-esteem to play Little Nobody. A genuinely fun buddy cop movie. Bring back Vanessa Kirby. I hope you guys liked my Fast and Furious fan fiction. Edit. And to Blood Edge 24, Jacob is not a Gary Stu. Meanwhile in writer's room, he banged his head and became gay. See Disney, making villains gay makes them good. And that is all of them. I am so tired after doing all of that, but thank you for watching this video. I'm done with this franchise. I'm never watching another one of these movies ever again. Uh, I'll see you guys in two years for Fast X Part 2. I said forget about it, cuz.